I have the pleasure to introduce Jaap van Maanen. He's a member of the non-executive board at the Dutch National Bank. He's also a professor at the Groningen University focusing on corporate governance. He's the chairman of the Monetary Committee on Corporate Governance Code in the Netherlands. And he is the chairman of the supervising board at Evides, a company in the south of Holland. Welcome. Thank you. Well, let me start with the first question. Yeah, yeah. What do you see as the priority today in your field? Well, I, I, I do see different priorities. I think that um, there is a risk always in the field of corporate governance. We have a lot of regulations, codes, etc. And one of my worries, and there is one of my priorities, is um, the tendency in corporate governance to make things more complex than necessary. What I see in some way is what I should like to call artificial complexity. Professionals, um, um, rule makers, politicians, regulators, all have a tendency to make things more complex. That helps them in their own employability um, and it, but it doesn't serve um, a good economic purpose. Another one is that um, you never can talk about corporate governance without talking about ownership. And what we see in general is that we all in some way like to uh, like to see that companies develop to companies which are quoted companies, quoted on the stock exchange. We, make business less personal than it should be and that we give debt a bigger role than it should have. I think it is very important to always to, to keep in mind that we don't need to go to the stock exchange and that we don't always need to work with a lot of debt. There are other approaches. Separation of ownership and control, which you especially see in, um, in stock market companies, is not always a necessity. And that brings me to another priority. We should give an opportunity uh, to businessmen uh, to develop uh, kinds of business that we don't know yet, that we can experiment with, and, uh, and not always look, well, we want to change an organization until it looks like something that we know. We are in need of innovation of business models and some possibility uh, for out-of-the-box thinking. Interesting. If you look at the opportunities, is that we can see that there is a lot of money in the world. We all try to, in some way, to organize uh, money through pension funds and institutional investors and banks, etc. Sometimes very traditional uh, finance engines. The opportunity is that we have to sit back and have a look to what are we going to do with all that money and how can we stimulate people to take the right investment decisions. Do you mean that, that it requires a bigger amount of risk-taking in the world of business? Risk-taking, yes. But I, I'm more thinking about personal risk-taking than about financial risk-taking. Mm -hmm. I think that we, we need more people who have the opportunity to take risks with their own career. One of the biggest opportunities for our country is the fact that our people are going to live longer. So you can stretch your development. You can stretch your development. You can take more personal risks mm -hmm. because you have more time mm -hmm. to be successful. But how, you, how do you marry that to leaders who go through, let's say, a period in a company where they grow the company? What do they do at that moment in time? How do you guide them then? You should never appoint a leader who doesn't have the wisdom to uh, reflect on his own development, on his own personality and who is not willing um, to listen to people uh, after the moment that he has got all that power that in general leaders do have. So where people get addicted to all the things that are connected to leadership. That's their problem, but it is also the problem of their environment and they always need people around them, whether it's their wife or their children or their friends or their non-executives who are brave enough to challenge them on this issue of their own personal wisdom. But does it mean that the leadership ethos has to change to a certain extent, do you think? It is the responsibility of all people, whether it's shareholders, or it is the people in the enterprise board, or it is the fellow executives, or the non-executives. They all have a, a challenge and a duty 
to do something with the leadership ethos. And at the moment that they say yes, in the situation that they, they should be saying no, then there's something wrong with their ethos. Because they are the people who have to protect their leaders, sometimes against themselves. Very interesting. Now in that light, what do you see as your personal role in achieving that? I'm fascinated by what's happening in the top of companies. And what I like is to, in some way, but mostly by asking questions, is um, to have people look into the mirror. You mentioned uh, uh, my activities as a member of the supervisory board, as non-executive. That's one aspect. The other aspect is that I like to be a boardroom consultant. But sometimes they need people to ask the right questions and to make them develop themselves uh, on all those aspects. So in fact your, your role also is to help them use their potential, exploit their potential. Yes, that is to see people grow themselves by, um, by finding out that they have more potential than they have been using so far. Uh, one more question, it's a bit of a philosophical question. Yeah. What is your view on the, on the future actually? Let me start with the pessimistic side. The problem is that we have a lot of corruption. We have corruption all over the world. There's no country without corruption, but it is especially at this moment uh, countries where leaders are misusing their position that are growing. I, I see that as a threat. On the other side, I see that we all those new countries, uh, new economies, uh, are going to, to, to bring us, and are already bringing us, uh, new kinds of wisdom, new kinds of ideas, so that, uh, that makes me very optimistic yes. for the future. And that, of course, will also affect the, the way leaders perform uh, and, and, and exercise their, their leadership, so to speak. Because obviously, you know, if, if, if you get into a more networked society, do you think that will change? Or? One of the big problems for, um, for leaders with a lot of experience is that when they are faced with new issues, that they try to change the picture until it looks something that they can solve. And I think that uh, the big challenge for leaders in this time is to be very open-minded when you look to new situations, when you look to hey, for yourself new behavior and see what's happening there and, and which are the opportunities that I as an entrepreneur uh, can use. And, and, and I think that is one of the biggest challenges in, in a, in a fast-changing world. In the long lives that people are going to have, so they are going in their life, they are going to see a lot of change. It's really to be able to observe the new developments, to understand them, and to take the right decisions. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for this interview. Really appreciate it. Okay. Thank Cheers. you very much.